Okay, the next song we're going to sing is How Great Is Our God. And then after that, we will all stand up and sing our theme song, okay? to me in your in your hands not me
and we are getting ready as soldiers. Of Jesus going on before And wide. We don't know if you know how to sing in your. Do you know? Yeah. Can you stand again, please? Then we are going to do that one. to sing that song. So if you don't mind, and we will do one, yeah? And then you see. Do this one, okay. I think this one sounds more. Okay, yeah. And then, um, it's 
sorry, the second one will be D and so when we get to the end, you will mention it. So, so if you couldn't do that one, then you will sit down. Hello? Hello? Um, actu actually, Actually, th there are rules in this um, in this song. It's, it goes like um, after we after we all sing the whole thing, the second round, we are not going to we're not going to mention some of, some of the words, but we ha we are going to do the action. So, if we, if we are not if you are not supposed to um, say the word, but instead if uh, we have to do the action and you say the word, like um, I don't know. Okay, let me let me demonstrate. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Something when we when we do the mm, yeah maybe we won't hear if some somebody said um, deep or something so instead we won't say anything we just do the action so we can notice the person who said the word yeah what yeah so if you say if you say the word it means you are out you have to sit down then we continue. Okay, let's go. Deep and wide, let's start. Deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. No, no. Whoa, that's it. No, it's okay. It's all right. We are going to do it. We are going to do this one or to the end. And then you know, maybe next time we can do that. Because of time. We don't want to take your time. Okay, yeah. So we are going to do one to the end. And then we we'll continue. Okay? We don't want to waste time.
if you okay, we, we finish now. So if you the one that we shouldn't say, if you say it, then you'll sit down until everybody uh, the two person who will win. So that's it. Thank you very much. And we are going to continue and we are going to call the one who is going to lead us in open prayer. For so we we'll call um Doran Apia Konadu to lead the prayer. Oh Lord, thank you for everything you have done for us today. Guide us and lead us up here, giving us this day to spend with you, oh Lord. Thank you for everything you have done to us throughout all the days that we have been listening and reading your word. Guide us as we're going through this day and we're going to have lots of fun when we're going to do lots of stuff today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. And we call um, Koku to give us the uh, scripture reading. I am reading Philippians 2, verse 13. For it is God... For it is God who works in you, both to will and to do, for his good pleasure. Amen. Our special song is in hymn number 452. <laughs> What heavenly music steals over the sea and trans in the senses like sweet melody? Tis the voice of the angels born so. Convoy of angels, dear Jesus, I pray, let me join that sweet music, come take me away. Though dark are the waters and rough is the Searches our grave for the heavenly music has ravished me so I must join in the chorus. I'll go, let me go. I must join in the chorus. I'll go, let me go. Cutting off the hand. Often it seems that to surrender the will to God is to consent to go through life maimed or crippled. But it is better, says Jesus. It is better for self to be maimed wounded and crippled, if thus we may enter into life. 
Wow. Now, what is the wheel? Let me explain this to you. How many of you have ever, or how many of you play an instrument? Let me see your hands. Okay, a lot of you play instruments. All right, put your hands down. How many of you play sports? Let me see your hands. I mean, like, not just, oh, let's go out in the backyard and throw the ball around, but you, you play for a team, you're, you run track, you do whatever, whatever. Okay, great, put your hands down. So you all, how many of you go to work every day? Let me see your hands. Ah, see, not so many hands. Okay, somebody said, okay, I go to school. All right, now listen, let me ask you a question. Do you want to get up and go to work every day? No. All right, you didn't even want to get up this morning. All right. Do you feel like practicing your instrument every day? Sometimes you have to be encouraged by your parents or your teachers to practice, right? So even though you don't want to do it, you end up, even though you don't feel like getting up and going to work, you, when you are exercising, let's say you are a part of a sports team and a part of getting in shape is you got to do what? But one of the things you have to do is you got to run, right? That builds up your endurance. Now, when you run, there are like these two little people on each side of your shoulder, right? The one person is whispering, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Don't stop. But the person on the other side is not whispering, he's screaming, man, what are you doing? Stop. Sit down and rest. You look crazy out here. Is a lion chasing you? Oh, then why are you running like a lion is chasing you? Take it easy. But if you want to make the team and if you want to build your endurance, you have to ignore the voice that is shouting, stop, stop, stop. And you have to listen to the voice that sometimes is whispering, don't stop, don't stop. Keep going. If you're playing the guitar and your fingers begin to hurt, you have to keep on pressing and pressing. If you're playing the violin and your fingers hurt, if you're practicing the piano and your fingers are sore and you got, ah, you have to keep going and going. All of those things that we've just talked about are examples of the wheel in action. They're examples of what? The wheel in action. So each and every one of us knows how to exercise the wheel. The wheel is the driving force. It is the what? It is the driving force in every human being. But as we just read, it is through that wheel that sin retains a hold on our lives. The same wheel that gets you up in the morning to go to work when you don't feel like it. The same wheel that moves you to practice your instrument when you're tired and you don't want to. The same wheel that pushes you to keep running even though you want to stop. It is through that same mechanism that the enemy of your soul keeps you a slave to sin. So let me tell you what I used to think. I used to think this, that if I were to become a Christian, then God would make me a slave. He would make me a what? So I would pray, Lord, Please just make me do right. You ever thought about that? You ever wanted God to just make you to do what's right? Because you're like, man, it's too hard for me not to do wrong. But God, if you can come into my life and if you can force me to do right, then I'll be all right with that because I give you permission to force me to do what I know is right. But let me tell you, my friends, something that I discovered is God can never work like that. He does not work like that, and he can never work like that. Let me read another very, very important thing to you here. This is from our scripture text, Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. Do you remember it? For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure for it is God which worketh where in you both to to will and to to do now I made my own little translation this is the Conway translation here I want you to listen to this 
God provides the stimulus. You know what that means, yes? God provides the stimulus that awakens our desire to be saved. Then God enables us to make the decision to accept salvation. God then supplies you and I with the energy that we need to make our decisions effective so that salvation is experienced in our lives. How many of you have ever made a decision? Let me see your hands. Come on, raise your hand. You've made a decision. Now put your hands down. Now how many of you have made a decision and then didn't do what you decided that you would do? Let me see your hands. You know, I'm going to study real hard so that I don't have to cram at the last minute for my test. I'm going to use my time wisely. And then, oh, I haven't studied. And so you try to cram everything in at the very last minute. You and I are experts as human beings at making decisions and then not following through with what we have decided that we will do. That's why the Bible says, it is God which worketh in you both to will, that is to choose. It is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, how does that, how does that take place? Oh, man. Help us, Holy Ghost. It will require a sacrifice. Listen, it will require a what? It will require a sacrifice to give yourself to God but it is a sacrifice of the lower for the higher, the earthly for the spiritual, the perishable for the eternal. Listen, friends. God does not design that your will should be destroyed. Let me say that again. God does not design that your will should be destroyed. Why? For it is only through the exercise of the will that we can accomplish what God would have us to do. So how does that work? Our will is to be yielded to God that we may receive it again. That we may receive it again. Purified, refined, and so linked in sympathy with the divine that he can pour through us the tides of his love and power. Now, one of the things that my father does is he's actually a, a, a diesel tech or a diesel mechanic, but one of his hobbies is to restore old cars. So he has a car from like 1920. He has a car from 1930. He has a car from 1960. So he has taken these cars. When he got them, they were rusted out, corroded, broken down. And when, when you would see them today, they would look like they are brand new. He has completely restored them. When you open up the hood and you look at the engine, it's so clean that you could eat off of it. Amazing, right? Well, what this says to us is that God takes your will and mine. It's perverted. It's corrupted. What do I mean? I mean the only time that you and I exercise our wills is for our own selfish benefit. So because I don't want to get embarrassed, I'll do more than I normally would so I can avoid embarrassment. That's the will. Because I don't want to be made fun of, I will work harder than I usually or normally would work so that no one will make fun of me. That's an exercise of the will. But our wills, as we said, are perverted and selfish. So God takes our wills, he purifies it, he refines it, and he links it together in sympathy with his own divine will. What does that mean? It means that you will desire to do the things that God desires you to do. Man, isn't that amazing? And you won't even have to Try very hard to think about it. You know how sometimes, okay, I got to be good. 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 Oh, Lord, forgive me for being bad. Forgive me for being bad. Forgive me for being bad. Because trying to be good without God's divine help doesn't really work. 
but your will and mine can be connected together with God's divine will. And then God does what? He gives it back to you and says, now I want you to do what I created you to do. One of my favorite books, the book Education, says this, that each and every one of us is given a power akin to that of our creator. This is one of the things that separates us from all the animal kingdoms. You know what that is? It goes on to say we have the power to think and to do. We have the power to think and to do. That's, that's what we're talking about, the will. But we already discovered that we think and we make decisions and then we don't do. That's because our will is weak. But when God cleans it, when God purifies it, when he links it together with his own divine will, the human will, that is your will, the human will becomes, listen to this word, omnipotent. It becomes what? What does that mean? What does that mean? What does it mean when something is omnipotent? You're scared to say it. What, what does it mean? It means that it's all powerful. All powerful. That means that anything, anything, my young fr friends and my old friends, anything that you choose by the grace of God to do, you can do when your will is linked together with the will of God. Now let me tell you something. There's a time in the Bible when the will of human beings was bent towards evil. It's found in Genesis chapter 11. You remember what happened? This was one of your, you all studied Genesis, right? What happened in Genesis chapter 11? They were building something. It was going to reach up to heaven. It was called, it was called the Tower of of Babel. Now, who remembers what God said when they were building that tower? What did God say? Okay, let us what? Why did God confound their languages? What did he say? What was the reason he gave? I haven't heard it yet. What is it? What is it? So they wouldn't be able to fix, finish fixing the tower? No, 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 there's something else. It has something to do with the number one. Go ahead. Let me, let me, can, can, get, get that young lady a microphone. I think she's got the right answer. The people are strong, and if they are all united, they'll be, no one will be able to stop them. Mm. Wow. God said the people is one. Her version, they are strong. And God said, now nothing that they imagine will they be restrained from doing. Did you hear what I just said? God said, that there is nothing that these people can imagine that they will not be able to do. I want you to just marinate on that for a minute. Just think about that. Consider the things that you can imagine today. Consider the things that you can imagine today. And consider God saying that because this young man or this young woman is one with me, there is nothing that they can imagine that they will be restrained from doing. How much can you imagine for yourself for the glory of God? When your will is linked together with God's, all things are possible. All things are possible. But it does take a sacrifice. It takes a very painful sacrifice to give up that which you deem essential so that in fact you can have eternal life. I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you today 
that it does take a sacrifice to reach God's ideal, but it is a sacrifice well worth its cost. Well worth it. Well worth it. I want you, my young friends, to be able to reach God's ideal. I don't want anything that is for the glory of God to be withheld or restrained from you. And you can achieve any and everything you can imagine for the glory of God. But first, you must give him your will so that he can then give it back to you. So that you can respond to the movings of the spirit in your life. Bow your heads with me and close your eyes this morning. Loving Father and our God, you have created us far more fearfully and wonderfully than we could ever have imagined. And yet, Lord, we experience so very little of what you have intended for us to experience. It's not because it's impossible for us to experience these things, but it's because we have not made the type of surrender that is necessary in order for us to experience living as you've intended us to live. In our world, Olympic athletes sacrifice so that they might train and push their bodies to the very limits of physiology, all to obtain a gold medal. Musicians sacrifice hours upon hours to train so that they could reach the very pinnacle of their individual musical pursuits or professions, all for money and fame. But what we have been talking about is not a gold medal, it's not money, it's not fame, it is eternal life. Oh Lord, I pray this morning that the reality of what we are speaking about would settle in in the minds and hearts of all of my young friends. And I pray that the sacrifice that is essential if we would reach your ideal for us. I pray that we would gladly make that sacrifice in yielding our wills to you. Then, Father, when you have purified and refined our wills, I pray that we may receive them again and use them for your name's honor and glory. Forgive us today for our laziness when it comes to spiritual pursuits. Forgive us for more aggressively pursuing academics and sports more than we pursue eternal life. And I pray, dear Father, that you would give us a zeal and give us a desire, a hunger, and a thirst for that which is spiritual that which is eternal. Thank you, Lord, for placing omnipotence within our reach. In Jesus' name, amen.